Hi, I'm JC. I have been really dealing with some gut issues as I get older, and so I wanted to go back sort of to my roots. My grandmother used to make sauerkraut in a big old stone crock when I was growing up, and uh, I decided I'm going to start making sauerkraut for myself again. So I figured I'd take you along with me and you can see how to make it. Let me I'd like to point out that if you are interested, this is a great book to start out with fermenting. So I recommend it's a uh, very slim, very inexpensive, and it's kind of the... So here's what we're going to do. I'm going to chop this up into little bits. And as I do that, I'm going to weigh it. And I need five, about the ratio is five pounds of cabbage to three tablespoons of salt but I don't know how much cabbage I have. So if you have an option of grating this, uh, I just sort of rough chop it however you like it. If with my kitchen scale here, you'll see that this is about how much uh, chopped up makes a pound and that's a little over half of a very large. And so I'm just shy of two pounds. Five pounds of cabbage takes about three tablespoons of salt. So if we only have two pounds, we need somewhere in the ballpark of a tablespoon and a half. Tablespoon, tablespoon and a half, which is around four to five teaspoons, somewhere in that ballpark. Again, it's not an exact science. I recommend that you lift and sprinkle it in among as you go so that you really get everything covered and that'll probably be about right. Again, it does not have to be perfect, but that gives you approximate ratio. You're gonna to wanna to make sure that you are using um, a free-flowing salt that has, has no additives put into it. So I'm gonna just do like another teaspoon and that's gonna be good enough. No additives. We want this to not clump. We want it to dissolve into the mixture here. Okay, so we're gonna draw the water out of this. So we're going to just crunch, get your hands in there and just crunch and squish and crunch and squish. Okay, I've been crunching this for three or four minutes and as you can possibly see here, the cabbage has gotten very bruised and like squished. We're wanting to kind of break down the fibers a little bit so that uh, the salt can get in there. The salt is going to draw out the water. Okay, you need any large crock or glass container. Doesn't really matter what it is. I'm not doing all that much. Um, this is, if you did a full five pounds, you definitely need something this big. You also have the option at this point to add flavor if you want. You could add uh, some chunked up garlic. This is dill um, and this is caraway. Caraway is very traditional. So I'm gonna put a little bit, you don't wanna overdo it, like kind of figure out how you like it. I'm gonna do about, yeah, it's about a teaspoon of caraway. Kind of mix that in. I'm not doing much. Um, it can get really strong and overpowering if you get too much caraway. Okay, so then you're gonna pack your jar. So you're gonna take your container and you're going to put it in like so. It's a very big container for this size, this much. But you are gonna be packing it, put it down down in there as tight as you can get it. So get it packed. What you're also gonna see is, see all that water that's starting to pour out of there? That's just been in the last five minutes since I've started breaking down the fibers here. That salt is gonna pull the water out of the cabbage, which is what we want. We want the cabbage eventually covered in water. Okay, push down the sides. Get it packed in there as best we can. Okay, then what we're gonna do is we're gonna weight this down. So if you happen to have an amazing old crock from your grandmother that has uh, crock weights in it, great, use it. You probably aren't watching this video if you have crock weights, you already know how to do it. Um, I'm just taking an old plate and setting it down in there. Center it like so, duh. And then I just filled up a ball jar with water. You could use a big rock, You could, as long as you clean it first. Um, and I'm setting that on the plate. What this is gonna do is it's going to press down the cabbage. 
we want to press it so that it's got weight on it. So we're going to kind of push the salt out of it. And then I'm going to leave it. In about an hour, I'm going to come back and see how much water we have. If we don't have enough water covering this, then I will add some more. You need to keep the cabbage under, you know, centimeter, you know, half an inch of water at all times. Don't let it drop below there. It's going to be an anaerobic area so that basically you're keeping out any mold. So this is one tablespoon of salt for every one cup of water. So I have two tablespoons of salt and two cups of water in here. Okay, I made up some more water. You want the water to be covering the cabbage and uh, you're gonna see there's some floaters. There's some ones that are, I know, gross. Uh, they're not gross, they're fine, but uh, there's gonna be some, especially if your plate's not quite the right size, uh, that are gonna float to the top. But that's why you wanna pack it as hard as you can. Um, just leave them, they're gonna be fine. Um, in a couple of days, we will check and as it ferments, you're gonna find some bloom, some mold might be growing on top of this. And at that point, we can skim that off and we'll take the anything floating with it. And uh, we're just gonna let it go. And after about a week, we should have... Okay, let's go down the rabbit hole on fermented food, specifically sauerkraut. So originally, fermenting, pickling, was done to preserve food thousands of years ago. It started back in China. But recently, we found out that fermenting really has all kinds of positive effects on our microbiome. Uh, it has anti-inflammatory properties, it has possibly anti-carcinogenic, all kinds of wonderful things that it does for your body and for your gut. That's because of the lactic acid bacteria that exists in fermented foods. Um, and look, there's other things in there as well, yeasts and various other things. But the lactic acid bacteria helps make vitamins and minerals and peptides and enzymes that really have excellent health benefits. However, those bacteria are finicky and they will die if you add heat. So if you were to go to your local supermarket and buy sauerkraut in a can, a jar, or a bag, then know that it's been pasteurized, meaning it's been heated to kill the bacteria. This makes it you know, safer in the sense that there's no bacteria in there that could potentially make you sick, but it also killed all the good bacteria as well. So if you would like to get the maximum health benefit from your coleslaw, from your sauerkraut, then you want to do it yourself, do it at home. Or you want to go to a natural food store where you can get um, sauerkraut might be labeled live or raw or unpasteurized. If it's, marked, if it's not marked like that, then you can pretty much guarantee it's been pasteurized. Um, pasteurized still tastes good, but it's not gonna have the same bite and it's not going to have the same health benefits. So your best, uh, your best deal to get all those health benefits is just to make it at home. Okay, it's been three or four days, and as you can see, it's starting to get cloudy. You can't smell it, but it's starting to smell like sauerkraut. Um, and we still have the floaters on the top, but I don't have any bloom. There's no mold on the top, which is great. Um, if there was, I would just gently scoop it off, and then I'm gonna let this go another couple of days, and at the one week mark, we will check on it again. The sauerkraut is done enough for my liking. I wanted you, I was hoping, I'm gonna see if I can zoom in here enough that you can see. Right here, for example, see that white spot? That's mold. There's a couple spots like that throughout and I'm going to take my little strainer here and pull that carefully off the top so I don't get any of the mold in the final. But, I'm not a fan. There's just a couple little little pieces in there that have just showed up in the last couple of days. Okay, so once you get the mold, if there is any bloom on the top done, then again, my hands have been washed. You're going to pull the plate. Now, again, this was not an ideal setup. The plate should have been a teeny bit bigger. The container should have been a little bit smaller. So we're going to decant this and then uh, we'll do our final taste test. Well, I'm gonna have to get a bigger one, but you get the idea. Well, um, let's taste this, see how it, uh, how it ended up. Hmm, it's a little too salty. And the caraway flavor isn't coming through quite strong enough, so 
I think what happened was because I there was such a small amount of cabbage for such a large container, I added quite a bit of salt water there at the end to make sure it was thoroughly covered. And I probably should have added just plain uh, tap water, clean, clean water as opposed to adding salt water because I think that's what put it over the edge. Um, it's edible, but I uh, need to eat it with something that's pretty bland uh, in order for this salt not to totally overwhelm it. So uh, next time I will add more caraway because the caraway flavor here is barely coming through. Um, and I will decrease the amount of salt. And like with all fermentation, it's a process and no two batches are ever going to be the same. And you're going to have to find out for yourself what works in your conditions. But I hope that uh, this got you off to a good start and uh, I will see you next time. Bye!